Well, our nightcap will be Northwestern and Maryland. First up, Indiana and Wisconsin. And let's get to our public address announcer, Byron Hudloff, for the introductions of our two teams tonight. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Verizon Center for the quarterfinals of the 2017 Big Ten Men's Basketball Tournament. Tonight's game features the number 10 seed, Indiana Hoosiers. And the number two seed, Wisconsin Badgers. Right now, let's meet tonight's TireRack.com starting lineups. At forward for Indiana, a 6'8 sophomore from Waynesville, Missouri. Number 13, Juwan Morgan. At forward for Wisconsin, a 6'8 senior from Toledo, Ohio. Number 10, Nigel. At center for Indiana, a 6'10 sophomore from Rochester, New York. Number 31, Thomas Bryant. At forward for Wisconsin, a 6'8 senior from Bowling Green, Ohio. Number 30, Vito Brown. At guard for Indiana, a 6'4 junior from Marion, Indiana. Number one, James Blackman, Jr. At center for Wisconsin, a 6'10 sophomore from Milan, Illinois. Number 22, Ethan Huff. At guard for Indiana, a 6'1 junior from Raleigh, North Carolina. Number two, Josh Newkirk. Guard for Wisconsin, a 6'3 senior from Germantown, Wisconsin. Number three, Zach Showalter. At guard for Indiana, a 6'3 junior from Richmond, Virginia. Number four, Robert Johnson. And at guard for Wisconsin, a 6'3 senior from La Crosse, Wisconsin. Number 24, Bronson Haynes. The Hoosiers are coached by Tom Green. The Badgers are coached by Greg Gard. Well, ready to tip it here in D.C. as we take a look at those starting lineups officially courtesy of Buffalo Wild Wings. And you see how they will line up very familiar names, familiar faces to both of these programs. Before tip tonight, let's get to the third member of our team, Mike Hall. What do you have tonight, Mike? Great to be with you, partner. Good to be with you, Brian. You know, the Badgers have struggled at the end of the season, losing five of their last seven games. One of the reasons why is their free throw shooting. In the last three games combined, they've shot only 44% from the floor. Now, the Badgers staff told me they've done nothing different this week to try to fix it because individually they believe the players will get better simply because it's the postseason. And the numbers suggest that's true. Two years ago, Nigel Hayes went a perfect 16 of 16 from the line in the Big Ten tournament. Last year, Ethan Happ went 7 of 8 from the stripe. Plus, they've always got Bronson Koenig. So good, he hasn't missed a free throw in a game since February 5th. So, Raph, maybe if nothing else, no matter who gets fouled, they should just sneak Koenig to the line and pretend he's the one who should shoot. Uh, he wouldn't mind stepping there, I'm sure. He is a tough competitor and very good come tournament time. It's a lot of jinx-worthy material in that uh, report as well. A from lot of goal. numbers. But the free throw story for Wisconsin is certainly a big one. They've cost them in a game against Iowa. Wisconsin felt like they got it together in a win over Minnesota last Sunday. This will be their first game since then. Indiana rolling yesterday and an easy flow kind of game against the Iowa Hawkeyes. We're ready to tip it off. First of our quarterfinal matchups on BTN tonight. It is Happen Bryant and Wisconsin Controls. Bryant Anderson right now. The Hoosiers go. Out to Koenig. Comes it to Happ, who's out high at this point. You might see that quite often as Nigel Hayes hits the first shot. And that's how we get started here tonight. Boy, that is a welcome sight. Uh, they need him to play bigger and better. And he occasionally at the four spot, the power forward might be a little bit of a better lineup. We may see that. You know, we talk a lot about uh, the individual performers and the way these two teams have played. Wisconsin, Raph, knows they are in. They're in great shape right now. They want to have a good run. It's all about a conference title for them. Now, meanwhile, the conference title here in this tournament for Indiana is important, but they're going to have to win 
one for sure, maybe two games to find their way to the NCAA tournament. This is a team on the outside looking in right now. And they have a chance the way they played yesterday. Unfortunately, the style is very difficult to play the speed of game that Indiana desires. Newkirk's really played well at night. Newkirk the first ball. Blackman pulls down the offensive board. This is the guy Johnson I think has to play well. When he plays well, they're a different team. You know, Robert Johnson with just eight points and six rebounds in their win against Iowa yesterday. They scored 95 points. Indiana set a program record for points and three-pointers made in a Big Ten tournament. The dinner bet, they don't get 95 today. Yeah. <laughs> That's a pretty safe one, I think. Blackman fires, and Blackman hits a three ball for James Blackman, Jr. Well, if Indiana wants to run, they got to guard, force tough shots. Nice little cross. Johnson Koenig, one of his favorite spots, a little pull-up jumper, comes up a little bit short. Well, we've had two fantastic games already today on this floor. In the first two games of these quarterfinal matchups, as Vito Brown secures the rebound. And this feels like a game with a little bit of urgency on Indiana's side, and Wisconsin maybe getting their rhythm back after losing five out of six. Nice dump inside, and Hap finishes. Hap does a great job of walking the man up the lane or away from the post on a leading pass to the tent. Empty side. And Nigel Hayes, who is comfortable guarding anyone on the floor, commits the foul. Uh, just making sure your defender gets out high enough where you can do some damage. I can clear that for you. We can finish that play. Uh, great loop. Terrific connection. Johnson drawing the foul from Hayes. Half and Bryant. Great matchup to watch in the front court tonight. And a very good defender. Perhaps the best defender in the Big Ten. And you just saw that wall up. There's no room for that crossover. Numbers are and now three-point pull by Johnson, and he's got it. People say, how has the game changed? I would be taken out of the game. <laughs> I did something like that. You didn't go to the rim and get a deuce. Three-pointers in transition. A big part of especially this cream-led Indiana team. A lot of three-point shots, and most are comfortable taking them. Wisconsin coming in 23 at 8, 12 and 6. They finished the conference play, and that's a good sign early for the Badgers. Yeah, you know, watching him, he loves to back in. It sort of slows him down. He's not a guy that can blow by people. But boy, that is satisfying for Wisconsin if he can knock that down consistently. They scored 12 and 6 rebounds in their win against Minnesota last Sunday. That was a 66-49 win over the Golden Gophers, who won earlier today, beat Michigan State to advance. And nice right. job again, huh? Turn it over, Indiana. Wow. The one statistical area that drives Tom Crean crazy is the turnover numbers for the Hoosiers. They shoot it well, they score it well, but they turn it over a lot. The most in the Big Ten, Rat, 15.3 turnovers per game. And they get them in spurts, too. It blows them out of situations. Now even the ball so important, particularly against a team like Wisconsin. Watch the footwork there. Paul Morgan yeah, turns into a double team. Hayes on the cut a little bit late. Shot clock down to five. Now Hayes will back his way in. Double team comes again. He's in all kind of trouble. And a whistle. A foul on Indiana. Let's see who they get with the shot clock at one. Well, I don't know how we got through that. You got a trap, close it, and go and him pursue the rim. They get Bryant on the foul. Nice step through, though. Without a walk, too. Pretty good power. With one on the shot clock. Hayes ends up at the line. And as Mike Hall mentioned, this will be a big story for the Badgers as we roll through the Big Ten tournament and certainly into the NCAA tournament. And Hayes hits the first. Yeah, good teams get there often and with regularity. Hayes only a 58 percent free throw shooter one out of two Good early push here Robert Johnson has Brown on the now Johnson kicks it New Kirk up in there and now Blackman pretty pass yeah. Brian with a catch can't finish mm. put it right in the sweet spot That's Brian missed it the same thing right on the platter Kane and Udell 
with a calf injury. Certainly disrupted what Wisconsin wants to do. Hayes gets it up on the glass, gets his own, and now he's fouled. And back to the line he'll go. And if that's on Bryant, that's a quick two on the big fella. Sure is. And you mentioned Kennedy with the calf injury. He actually sat him a game, and it helped. And prepare him for the stretch run. Takes us to our first timeout. Two free throws coming for Nigel Hayes. The Lincoln Memorial, Washington, D.C., the home of the Big Ten tournament this season. Basketball on BTN is brought to you in part by State Farm. Talk to an agent today at 800 State Farm. Oh, the great memorials here. It is great to be in Washington, D.C. First year. This is the 20th version of the Big Ten Tournament. First year in D.C. And you see uh, Indiana's tournament resume raft. And this is a big story now. Those two big wins in November against Kansas and North Carolina propelled them into the top ten. But it has been a struggle since. It sure has. Of course, coming down the stretch here, a lot can transpire in the next couple of days. It's imperative that they win a couple more, no question about it. Does the committee remember that far back? I'm sure they will. One of those was a neutral court win, which carries a little more weight as Hayes hits the free throw. We saw Bryant on the bench, two fouls if you're just picking us up here. First of our doubleheader on BTN in the quarterfinal rounds. And so Bryant with two fouls, he sits. That forces Indiana to go small, and that allows Greg Gard and Wisconsin to counter with Trice in there as the point guard. And this lineup played very well the other day. And Davis had a terrific game. Badgers out to an early two-point lead. Slowing it down as they usually do. Good battle inside, and what do we have? So a, the, each referee looked at each other. One was ready to call a travel. The other was ready to call a block. And that's good officiating. Remember earlier in the year, they had a block charge in the Indiana Purdue game, I think it was. And each guy had a different call for a double foul. But that's great communication by the officials. Nigel Hayes picks up his second foul. So the two big men are on the bench early in this one. Vito Brown comes right back in for Wisconsin. I like this mobile lineup for the end. Uh, pulls down the board. Blackman couldn't finish. Now Trice running the show for the Badgers. Drag screen by half. Trice gives it right back to him. Beautiful pass. They collapse down on him. Locks in his pivot foot. There's Kading. He likes playing off that ball. Why not? Takes offense. Bronson Koenig, deadly from three-point range. Working inside. And another one in there, so good work on the glass by the Hoosiers, and Blackman Jr. delivers. I think Davis, the guy who got a piece. Half the center of all the action with this club. It is unusual not to have a center that can stick the long one, though, isn't it, for Wisconsin? You know, it's, it's been a long time since they haven't had that piece. Brown with the ball fake, steps into it, and Vito Brown is a guy that has had his struggles shooting the basketball. Confidence wavering a little bit. Long range ball, no offensive board. Try another one, Robert Johnson. I like that. Shooting it with confidence. Missed the postseason last year. Had that ankle injury that was... A tough loss for Indiana, a team that ended up in the Sweet 16 in the NCAA tournament. They were Big Ten regular season champs last year. Tom Crean, the coach of the year in the Big Ten last year, as Trice delivers. They do for that fast. Oh, man. All the room do for me, right? The swirl in the coaching world. No wonder you're sitting next to me in all these years. Yes, I enjoy you as well. <laughs> for other reasons. <laughs> And new Kirk comes up short, and another opportunity. Johnson's hot. Can fire a fourth chance, and a left-handed layup is good. And how about Indiana on the offensive glass? And Greg Gard is looking for answers now. This is a speed line. If they can run to the rim, gather rebounds, kick it back out. Early on fire. The Hoosiers. Robert Johnson averaging over 13 a game for the Hoosiers. Misfires, gets his own, knocks it down. Three-point shooting 
for the Hoosiers. They've made a couple, and Raft, the offensive rebounds for Indiana is a story. They have five already. They've scored 10 second-chance points at yeah. this point. Well, Wisconsin's defense is so tough, you do need extra possessions, and, and the ability to run down rebounds and drag the defense away from the hole, I think will be a factor for Indiana. Khalil Iverson is in for Wisconsin, so Greg Gard not liking what he sees on the defensive glass. Iverson a high flyer, and here's that swing offense, and here's Trice. No. Got Caden on the floor as well for the Badgers. Blackman Jr. with Showalter on him, slips and falls. And that's where the timeout was, and probably water on the floor. And they did get a timeout. Indiana got the T.O with Blackman on the floor. That'll allow us a break. 13-11 in this first half, all tied up. Friday night, Washington, D.C., the Big Ten men's basketball tournament here on BTN. Let's check in with Mike Hall. What do you have, Mike? You know, it's funny. Bo Ryan used to be known in his huddles for being calm and not using a dry erase board. He would just draw stuff on his hand. In the first huddle of the game, I saw a lot of similarities with Greg Gard. He just used his hands. He was very calm. But I will say, the timeout after that, he realized they're getting offensive rebounds. Indiana's beating him 6-1, to one, and he was much more animated, screaming at his guys to box out. Yeah, the rebounding story. I think Bo didn't use the, the grease board because he it wasn't in the budget. He broke so many early, right? Oh, that's old school. And another deep one, Blackman, this time. I think Bo used to draw on the floor with chalk right. at one time. And there's nothing Greg Gard did, too. They never went out to dinner at a restaurant. This year they went out and they gave the phones in so that everybody talked to one another. We, should, like we should try that. I like that. That'd be tough. Especially for my generation. That's a 10-2 Indiana run, by the way. And now Trice, he's gotten up three shots. He's hit two of them, his first three. He is not passable. I like his action. The family tree. Gross. Demetri Trice, fantastic freshman from Huber Heights, Ohio. Joe Walter, an excellent defender. Matching up with Blackman. And Green on the floor. He played well the other day as well. Blackman tried to turn the corner, elevates over Showalter and hits. Pretty good defense by Showalter. Right there. Big time knockdown. It was at one point, Indiana had missed six consecutive two-point baskets. And they're going to really be disciplined against this swing offense. Back screen. An exchange, shuffle cuts. Communication skills got to prevail. No half, no haze on the floor. Trice taking over here. Trice comes up short, looking for a foul. Little Caden's on the floor. And that'll be a held ball. Possession arrow belongs to Indiana. Freddie McSwain, a good effort as well for the Hoosiers. We're off and running. The Hoosiers trying to make a run in the Big Ten tournament to play their way to the big dance. Hoosiers, Badgers, quarterfinal matchup tonight. A little variety spices up your life. A little crossover dribble. Put it back on his heels. A great challenge by Showalter. But the early, you've got to run them off. Step up. The kick out has been magnificent. Whether it's a follow on a rebound or a post delivery outside. Get the puppies organized and drill them. Let them go in a little bit. A little hop of their step right now for uh, Indiana. No question. James Blackman scoring seven of the last 12 for Indiana. You see the quick and loans. Uh, performance, amazing performance for the Hoosiers. 95 on the board yesterday against Iowa. And they made 12 three-pointers wrapped yesterday. And talking to Tom Crean before the game today, he said, A, we got a little bit of our confidence back. We feel like we're getting back to the team we thought we were. Mm -hmm. And then you look at a team that is scoring well, and they're a little more flow offensively, but it's the defensive end that has turned things around for Indiana, at least yesterday. And I like the way they're pushing the ball, even if they don't get an early Jay. And they've got a little more speed in their action. Get the ball side to side, reverse it. There's a quick run. Inside, nice Ooh, take to the basket, Devontae Green. He is tough. Another little family tradition. Hoosiers have made four in a row now. Brevin Pitzel is in for Wisconsin. These are not familiar names on the floor, at least rotations that we're seeing for either team with Nigel Hayes on the bench with two fouls. No half on the floor either for a moment. Now he's back. Thomas Bryant sits with two fouls as well. Brooks is going into some interesting combos. 
Shot clock down to three. Trey says, I'll pull it. Too much straight left. That is not the Wisconsin style. Deron Davis pulls down the board. Indiana wants to push it a little bit. Goodness, a little shake of faith. Comes up short. Iverson the rebound. How about that? A little luxury on the deck. <laughs> nice cut here. Great mark. That's what you need from Trice. That's going to be Indiana ball. No foul. And that's the right call it looked like. It looked like Iverson lost it going up. Well, he is some specimen attacking the rim. I love the cut. Yeah, you're right. Uh, Jarred it loose himself. Iverson is a high flyer, the sophomore from Grand Rapids, and he'll take a seat. Ian Trice giving Greg Guard some good minutes. Indiana up four with the ball, approaching the 10 minute mark of his first half. Nice double screen. And Johnson pretty active as well as Blackman on this set. Blackman turns a corner but can't finish, and there's Hack with the rebound. Well, he's got good hands. He loves to do this, too. Looking to take it all the way. Little spin, kicks it out. Wide open three, Showalter. And Zach Phil, and that push of the dribble, collapsed the D. Nice step in by Zach. Johnson tried to shake. Kane, if you notice Wisconsin, they switch everything. Yeah, and with half you can. Well, he's got great lateral motion. Vito Brown. Check out Davis. Inside, Davis fires one up. Offensive boards. McSwain gives it right away. Steal by Kane. Nice pass. pass. And half tried to make one extra pass. Walks with it. Go right to the rim. A great look. That size. You can finish it strong. Interesting game to start this one with no Bryant, no Nigel Hayes. A couple of teams that pride themselves on staying out of foul trouble, especially Greg Gard and the Badgers. Yeah, they don't get a whole lot of fast breaks, so you shouldn't mess up out. Right. Revan Pretzel with some extended minutes here. We'll see the points off turnovers for Indiana. Johnson will run the show. McRoberts on the floor now. A lot of action. Hustles, works hard. Nice. Right to the feet. And a turnover for Indiana. Pretty good idea. On the take, Katie gives it to Hap. Somehow secures it. Great hands. And there's Katie to pop three. Gives it up. Ball's moving well for the Badgers. Here's Pretzel. No. They're really hustling Indiana defensively, though. Double and recover. Indiana cleaning up all the boards. Johnson with the left. Not there. Another rebound for half. That's a little thing because of those two hands. A big miss. And Koenig is fouled. Devontae Green. A little nickel dimer there. Clever maneuver. Tough to play Koenig because he likes to dance for the jump shot. Get your weight forward and ability to blow by. Green with his first. Excellent minutes for the freshman from New Babylon, New York, the Long Island Player of the Year last year in high school. He'll get a breather. Neil Brown left wide open. That is a guy who needs to see one go through the net quickly for Badger fans. Develops some confidence. First run. For Curtis Jones. Jones with the left, gives it up, and a finish by Morgan. Nicely done. Great communication, and Morgan put that dive time perfectly. A lot of individual dribble drive fine. Hoosiers had missed four straight before that lob. Here's Showalter, a little mid-range off the window. And that's what make, makes playing Wisconsin tough. Everybody has to guard in the post. And it's not comfortable for guards down there. Approaching the seven and a half minute mark of this first half. Good one so far. Indiana and Wisconsin. And Kane with a steal. Jones got the air, turns it over, see if Wisconsin can do something with it. Vito Brown. Robert to on him. One on one there. Brown with the ball fake. And Brown scores it. A great patience in the hole by him. 
six lead changes we've had already. The Badgers go up one. New Kirk for three. Air ball. Oof. And that'll Good be check. Wisconsin ball. Not bad, huh? The ability to find a little dribble drive, get the retention. Jones with the delivery in. Vito, he could sing and deliver to low post as well. <laughs> Back and forth they go here. Indiana and Wisconsin quarterfinal matchup in the Big Ten tournament. And for Wisconsin, Bill, this is a team that is counting on the experience of this senior class, which is going to be the most decorated senior class in Badger history. Now, I've had them every year, and, and Bronson Caney calls me Bob Parker. He looks like Fonzie here, doesn't he? He's got I the mean, good flow going yeah, right he's there. he's got the... <laughs> and this Hi, is what Hopper. they've done. A couple of Final Fours. Sweet 16 last year, so that was their third for this class. They're headed back to a fourth NCAA tournament. And those wins in double digits now at 11. That is the most, and that matters to a coach and to a program that, let's face it, limped in down the stretch, having lost five out of six before they beat Minnesota on Sunday. And that was big for them mentally as well. But the consistency of this program at such a high level is extraordinary. Nigel Hayes continues to sit with two fouls. Bryant is back on the floor with two fouls for Indiana. And steps, a nice cross screen by Kane again. The happy feet. Turnover for Wisconsin. Greg Gard took over for Bo Ryan, signed a five-year deal last March, and what a great rally it was for Wisconsin. They how fortunate they were to have him on the bench with well. No doubt. And the Bryant back with the two, they go and use him, I like that. He's missed a couple inside from close range, has Bryant. Sure, he's just trying to get in the flow of this game now. He's been on the bench for a while with two fouls. A tough side for him away from the basket now with Brown. Koenig pulls it. Oh, Koenig with some elevation. And a little arc knocks it down. Well, yeah. half is just extraordinary. Always in the right place defensively. You can tell the prowess of half as Bryant gives it up quickly. Another offensive board. Johnson gets his own. Now Koenig jumps the lane again. Koenig in a race with Newkirk. Koenig has it swatted by Newkirk. What a play defensively by Newkirk. Tremendous effort. Yeah, really a great job anticipating at the other end. Wisconsin does a great job on the ball goes beneath the foul line. They're staying at home. They intercept this time to jump the passing lane on the perimeter. And terrific effort, just don't seal the deal. Transfer from Pitt, Josh Newcomb from Raleigh, North Carolina. Big play defensively there. Brown passed it up. Lacking that confidence. Four well, and a half to go in this first half. Half of the mismatch. Double team comes and they got a foul on that baseline. Let's see who they get for Indiana. They're going to get Newkirk. Now they are clever the way they disguise their little ball screens. They run their action and then the empty side. Have to make the decision. First foul on Newkirk. Badgers by three with the ball. Koenig back. And gives it up to Brown, who hits a three-pointer and lets mark that one. He looked over at you, too. You've been killing him. How <laughs> <Have> I know? <laughs> Four turnovers for Indiana, last seven possessions. Wisconsin has cashed it in. A big three by Vito Brown. Five-point lead on a 9-0 run. And that's really hurt Indiana all year long. When they do it and how they do it. Indiana's with seven of the last eight. Shot clock gets deep. Down to four. Johnson's got to go. Trice on him. Now Newkirk with one on the clock. And it's up. He clears it away. Good foul of Twitty and Bryant. <laughs> Trying to go on his own. And turns it over again at a foul. What's well, interesting about Wisconsin, they make you use clock. Everybody talks about their patience on offense, but it's their extraordinary defense that gets you deep into tough situations. And the big fella, everything but a drop kick now. A little frustration at the end, Vented. Half turned it over twice. They'll head to the bench for a breather. Alex Illikanen back in for Wisconsin. Luke Kirk will run the point. Swain is in for the Hoosiers as well. He slips into the post once in a while, runs the floor. 
That lane can get wide open for Indiana, as it is now. A lot of room for Blackman to work. And El Kane got a hand on it. Shot clock down to seven. Mismatch here. Bryant gave it up. Newkirk with Brown on him. And oh, my goodness. Newkirk, he has some elevation. And that really helped with Bryant outside. A better impact with him at the 10, I think. Four minutes without a field goal for Indiana. Just snapped. Big's got to like that. Stretch the D, got to hug him. It is interesting watching Wisconsin offensively. Very eager to pass the ball, share the ball. Koenig gets it, and then he is the one who is a willing shooter, especially early in the clock, and a team that typically likes to get deep in the clock and get the best shot. Nice lob here. Bryant is fouled. Guided out of bounds. Timeout on the floor. Well, you were just mentioning he thinks offensive. Why not? When you can stroke it like him, get him organized, break him down, triple threat, a little nylon by Brunson. He has been the man to take a lot of clutch shots in Badger history, and he is off to a good start. He's hit a couple of threes, has eight points. And we talked about that calf injury, and that was in that window of these previous six games in Raft. His uh, scoring was down, field goal percentage was very bad. He's turned it around the last four, though, and he's coming off a performance against Minnesota where he scored 17. Well, they asked Xavier about him taking clutch shots, right? Yeah, right. Uh, but, you know, they, whenever you have an injury, it's certainly debilitating. Uh, but as you mentioned to me off air, he gets stuck a lot. The late in the shot clock, and all of a sudden you've got to attempt one and you're under duress, and it's not the easiest of deliveries. Indiana basketball. Go to the three minute mark. Luke Kirk has been very active. Good work down there by Trice, though. Excellent. Hey, the freshman is really stepping up. It's not a bad team that has a lot of depth. Forced to go into their rotation a little bit today with Hayes on the bench with two fouls. We've hardly seen Nigel Hayes. Don't forget State Farm Halftime Report on location, standing by just a few feet from us over there. Big John Crispin, Messi Pardo, Sean Morris, Dave Repson. Looking forward to hearing their, their analysis at the half. Uh, Crispin never gave it up, so good point. Steve would have to be the point guard. Don't let John go first, you say. <laughs> Working inside, Davis kicks it. And Johnson comes up short. He hit a couple early. Mm -hmm. And Koenig right up on him, too. Well, those are deep shots. Really not making the defense work at all. Badgers offensively started five of eight. Good look inside. Half finishes. Clever. Half nose. Great slip. Great read. Good acknowledgement. Badgers had a stretch where they missed six of eight. Now they've made six of their last eight. So they've had some windows of excellent shooting, and now they're up nine points on Indiana. Coming in is the two seed. Uh, 12 and six in conference play. Shot clock gets deep again, down to five. A lot of dribbling there. Absolutely. Newkirk on the way gives it up. Davis had it swatted. Shot clock violation as the Badgers close the door on Indiana. That's well, some pretty good defense at that end, but the ability to get yourself into position to dominate. Excellent read and understand. You see all the deployment, the lift, the lift, opens it up. Just clever, well-conceived. And, of course, the big guy, number 22, really understands the game. Half has four points, five boards. That was the first assist for Trice, whose fingerprints are all over this first half right now. Wisconsin has eight total assists on 13 makes. Here's Kanan, long range three, short. Morgan gets the board, lost the handle, and now Indiana in their half court set. They've really settled deep. I think you've got to punch inside a little bit, get Morgan involved. This is six of their last seven, the Hoosiers. Late once more. Not a comfortable spot for Indiana. And now it's 
one on one. Shot clock goes, and another shot clock violation. And that's why the scores are low when you play Wisconsin. They make you use 30. It is a dilemma unless you get up, force the issue early, drive it to the rim, touch on the box. You just can't weave on the perimeter. You see Tom Green trying to get the attention of James Blackman Jr. Wisely, James didn't look left. <laughs> he knew it was coming. Indiana with six turnovers. And one in the first ten and a half minutes of this game. And now six cents. Blackman is trying to work on Katie, gets himself free. No, it's one and done for Wisconsin. And the white shirts all back in balance. Transition D extraordinary. No easy hoops for Indiana. Let's see the Badgers with a lot of offensive boards, but you will rarely see transition buckets as well on misses. Morgan <laughs> scores it, and he's fouled, and a chance at a three-point play for Jawan Morgan. A bowling alley delivery. <laughs> Where is, this? is that a spare or a strike? A little deep-in goal here. And just hanging tough with it. Well, that's the idea. Some good things happen when you go to the rim. With exactly. <laughs> no alley, no spare, no chalk. <laughs> Brevin Pretzel checks back in. Half picks up the foul. They're going to give Koenig a breather here with just under 30 remaining in this first half. Juwan Morgan will shoot the free throws. A 74% free throw shooter this year. Thank you, Pardon Katie remains on the floor. And Morgan hits. Three-point possession for the Hoosiers. State Farm halftime coming your way. Wrapping up this first half. Dave Repson and the gang standing by. Indiana needs a solid D here. Something to motivate him going into halftime. A rebound. If there's an average shot. Blackman's got to give ground. Look at this kid can blow right by him. Trice keeps an eye on the clock. It goes to seven. Shot clock is off. Go. Trice goes right by and trips. Loses the handle. A chance here for Indiana. Newkirk all the way gets it up in time and too firm off the glass. And that brings us to the end of the first half. Bryant and Hayes, the two big men, picking up two fouls early, four ties and six lead changes, and the coaching for Tom Green has already started for James Blackman Jr. Maybe over that defensive stance and maybe getting him involved going to the rim a little bit more. The other coach, Greg Gard, standing by with Mike Hall. All right, Brian, thanks. Greg, you end that half on a 14 to 5 1 run. What was different those last six or seven minutes? Well, we made some shots for number one, and we finally started getting some stops on the defensive end and, and cleared up the offensive glass. That was the biggest thing. I think they had 10 points of their first 18 were from offensive rebounds. So we got a little better there. We started to be more physical in the paint. <laughs> what do you need to do differently on the boards in the second half? Yeah, we got to block out. Starts with that. So we get blocked out, block outs taken care of to begin with, then we can go rebound the ball. Greg, thanks for your time. Thank you. you bet. And with that, we'll take a short break. And when we come back, Dave, John, Stephen, and Sean have your halftime analysis from D.C. here on BTN. Basketball on BTN is brought to you in part by Auto Owners Insurance, the no problem people. Find your agent at autoowners.com. Washington Monument. Washington, D.C. Here we are for the Big Ten Tournament. Brian Anderson with Bill Raftery, Wisconsin, with the halftime lead. And Raft, uh, you were talking during the halftime break about the interior defense of the Badgers. What have you seen? Yeah, it's mystifying, really. They do such a good job getting you late in the shot clock situations. They challenge every shot. They're always in the right spot. Great footwork. You can just see half able to help out, recover. They seal the deal with the rebound. Here's the footwork. Now the wall up. Really a great understanding of how to protect the interior. And here, late causing a walk. Just so impressive. Any crossover screens. There's a little chuck by Trice. Now he jumps out. The footwork to deny. And of course, Sealy once more with defensive rebound. And, and just very difficult to get an easy hoop. They're always in the right spot. Brian and Davis combined 0 for 7. Brian 0 for 4. He played just eight minutes. And now both coaches will reset with their big men, Nigel Hayes and Brian, committing two early fouls. 
And we'll see how the flow of the second half goes. Indiana trying to keep their postseason hopes alive for the NCAA tournament. Going to need a win today and probably a win tomorrow as Hayes hits the first shot. Pretty delivery with the left, too. Feathery touch. I think with the two, we knew he could challenge Bryant. Badgers glad to see Hayes get into it right away. He played just four minutes in the first half with those early fouls. And Morgan with the footwork and gets to the basket. Excellent. Mentioned how well he played yesterday. They need a little more of that action from him around the rim. They've been settling deep. Badgers up six. They ended the half on a 14-5 run. But it was a back and forth swing as Showalter too strong. And Bryant clears it away. Watch yourself there. Nice little play by Showalter. Almost got the passing play. Wisconsin was five for nine in the first half from behind the arc. He's blocking for three. That was short. Bryant. Offensive board. Indiana destroying Wisconsin in that category. They get a cash in as well as Johnson scores. Well, when you take taking long jumpers, the advantage is to the offensive shooting team. And they've been able to run them down. But what the delivery at the rim. Offensive rebounds and second chance points have allowed Indiana to stay in this one. Hayes now looking to clear out. See, I think he should do things quicker. They should. Very patient on the back end, but the kick out, the proper one to Katie. All that focus, all that attention inside would happen. Hayes on the floor together, and it is usually the three point shooting that does opponents in of Wisconsin. You see the numbers for the Badgers, their sixth three point hit so far today. Interesting with the ball screen by the guards, Blackman that time. Morgan. Working on Showalter, and it's half with the board. Showalter took one to the nose. Mm, very aggressive move, but I like it. Wisconsin and their four seniors trying to advance to the semifinals. Let's check in with the third member of our group, Mike Hall. What do you have, bud? Well, I talked with Tom Crean coming out of halftime, and while he was happy with the aggressiveness they had in getting rebounds in the first half, overall he was disappointed. On defense, he says we just got to get our hands up much more. And on offense, he says we need to stop being disappointed on missed shots because we'd miss some short shots, and then we'd have our heads hanging down the rest of the possession. Uh, good stuff from the head coach, and it is interesting the guys at the desk at halftime making great points about the Badgers and how efficient they are getting back in transition defense, and that has frustrated Indiana. They are unable to do what they want to do and what they were able to do, scoring 95 points against Iowa. Only three fast break points for the Hoosiers so far. And Greg Gard saying that's the first thing they talk about. They got half in the center spot. I think Morgan's going to get tagged with this one. First thing they put on the board is transition D. And, uh, just take that aspect away puts a lot of pressure on your half-court offense. So Morgan hit with his first foul. Seven-point Badger lead with the ball. First of our doubleheader tonight on BTN. Michigan beating Purdue earlier today. As Hayes goes to the hole, in and out, half with the offensive board. Koenig passes the three, and that will set it up. New shot clock, an eternity on this side of the floor for Indiana. And no bad shots. I mean, nice play by Koenig now, passing up. And that's out of bounds off of Morgan and the Hoosiers. And Wisconsin ball with 16 on the shot clock. Perhaps having more trouble than I've seen lately in that low post. They've guarded him decently. That's what the bracket looks like. Wisconsin or Indiana will advance to match up against Maryland or Northwestern in the semifinal tomorrow on CBS. As half from the ground misses. And let's see, that's out of bounds off of Newkirk. And another 30 seconds on the clock, Coach. And half didn't give up on it. Solid play. But his rhythm is thrown off because the bodies are aligned pretty closely. Feels like a pickup game, and we'll stay on this side of the floor. <laughs> Half court only. That's about all we can play right now, I think. <laughs> Maybe a free throw contest. Okay, the turn. Whips it over to Hayes in the corner. Hayes, no. And that is. 
is saved by Johnson. What a play. And finally, Indiana gets the ball back. Two offensive rebounds in the first half. They had two on that possession. Almost a third. And look at half half. They got the switch. I go to Blackman on him. Now they finally get it organized. Blackman, eight on the shot clock, goes to the floor. And now Indiana in a little bit of trouble. It's going to be out of bounds off of Hat, but five on the timer. You know, he's exhausted. He's still guarded properly, sealed the baseline. And with Newkirk a little banged up, I think Tom Crean wants to get him to the bench to get checked on, and Devontae Green will enter. Longtime athletic trainer Tim Garl will take a look. Uh, Josh Newkirk. Tim's been around longer than me. 36 years. Unbelievable. Oh, good pass. And the baseline out of bounds. Indiana comes up with a gift with five left on the clock. They sure did. Fell asleep. Took a peek straight at the ball. A little back cut. Five-point game. The game is ugly the way Wisconsin wants it. And Indiana start to oppose their will a bit. Inside, half got a D. Double team comes. A lot of double teams on half. Here's Trice in the corner. Yes, sir. Zach Showalter with that extra look. But half passes up a shot for a better opportunity. Third assist for Showalter. And seven made threes. And that's going to be Indiana basketball. Uh, half with that denial gets called for it. How about this extra look? A little nylon by the little guy. The world is crazy. Baby, it's you and I, I, I. It's been a great week so far. Terrific games earlier today. Michigan over Purdue. Minnesota over Michigan State. They came down to the last few possessions in each. That'll be the matchup tomorrow on CBS with Raft and Jim Nance, Grant Hill, Tracy Wolfson. And then our doubleheader tonight, Wisconsin and Indiana. Here in the second half, we'll have Maryland and Northwestern after that. Indiana gets a shot up from Blackman, and it's Hayes with the rebound. Uh, they're very fortunate, Wisconsin. Another mistake on the inbounds pass. Badgers up eight. Wisconsin has hit seven threes. They're 54% from three-point range. I think that can do more damage and stick with it. Uses footwork. He's working on Bryant. Spins and finishes. Wow. How about, that old, how about that little delivery? Heady play. A nice jump into the lane again by Trice. Trice going in. Morgan challenging. Trice puts it off the glass high. Hayes secures it. Boy, Morgan was way up there. I'll say, way up there. Showalter, speaking of high flyers, finishes with the left. That was a big time delivery. A little bit of a lefty floater. He epitomizes their toughness, I think, Zach. This is a team and a program that has gone to 18 consecutive NCAA tournaments. This group of seniors for Wisconsin on their way to their fourth consecutive. So much postseason experience. Half on the block. And half secures the board as well. Now Wisconsin wants to push a little. Bryant just whacks that. A little touch. Eagle Brown set to check in for the Badgers. This is why I think he can use his footwork a little more. Yeah, I, that's what he's got to start throwing. First Bryant got Hayes, then he got Hat. Absolutely. Timeout, Tom Green. And now Wisconsin Rath working inside. Uh, their baskets are coming easier because they're applying some pressure down on the block. Uh, whether it's Hayes with the little fancy. The E in horse with that kind of delivery. And just here, the dribble drive gets everybody's attention. A little floater by Zach. But the post up and the footwork, splendid. Washington, D.C., the home of the Big Ten tournament for the first time. And the beautiful Capitol building here 
in our nation's capital. Don't forget the march to Glendale, Arizona is on, and BTN covers it all. Game previews, interviews, complete post-game analysis of each postseason matchup, Big Ten basketball, and beyond tournament edition every night, all postseason long, starting Thursday on BTN. Jerry Palm, our friend from CBS, contributes to us here at BTN, and this is what he has. This is prior to play today, and Raft, you figure Purdue is going to be dropping a notch or two. Michigan and Minnesota, meanwhile, they move up. They may move up. A solid play. Michigan, that's just a great story the way it turned out. John Beeline, an amazing human being to begin with as a coach and as an individual, what he was able to do to help those that were in danger. Uh, spoke to Dan Dockage at halftime, and he was saying he spoke to his son, and they were traumatized by the danger. It wasn't just like a slide, it was a actually over ravines, and uh, the kids reacted beautifully, helped one another out. Just so impressive, and of course, coming here and playing. Uh, tells you a lot about the fortitude. Played in their practice jerseys in the opener of this tournament. That was blocked by Bryant. Michigan winning earlier today. They look like the hot team right now in the Wolverines. And they give John Beeline a lot of credit. His great leadership on the floor. We know that part of him. But off the floor in a very tense, anxious, scary situation. Now, by all accounts, the crew and then John Beeline and his coaching staff helping that entire organization go through that ordeal very well. It wouldn't surprise me at all, no John. Well, the Michigan Wolverines, if you haven't heard the news, they were unable to take off high winds in the Detroit area. And this is basically the timeline the next day. And there were a lot of players, Raph, that did not want to get on that airplane. But their first game against Illinois, all of their uniforms, all the combinations were still on the plane. So they went in their practice jerseys. And then earlier today, Michigan taking down the top seed. The second consecutive year Michigan has beaten the top seed last year. They eliminated Indiana, who was the top seed from this Big Ten tournament. I, I would have been tempted to play with the practice uniforms. You got to go a little bit. You know, just terrific what they were able to do. This Wilson had a big time game, didn't he? A real solid. 26 for EJ Wilson. He scored 18 in the first half, and they will match up against Minnesota tomorrow. A different guy step up for them, too. Bogdan watching games he does a great job. There's one. By the way, Prince's hairdo is different from the Purdue game. Yeah, they got to fill me in. That was a mid-conference uh, change of the barber. That was a complete overhaul is what that was. Hey, usually I had the long hair, had the man bun going. I think you should try the man bun. <laughs> That's really helpful. I'm going the reverse of the man bun. I think those baseball players would love to see you in a man bun. Three fouls on Nigel Hayes, who only played in four minutes of the first half with a couple of fouls. Make your pardon, Vito Brown was hit with that foul correction. So Canning will sit. Indiana with the ball in desperate need of some kind of rhythm offensively as they trail by 13 and they're drifting into the danger zone against a possession oriented team like Wisconsin. And the defense has caused them some difficulty sending for deep shots, and that certainly gets them going over those green. And a big time boost. I still think they got to go in, get to the foul line. The other brother of Danny Green to the Spurs, and he can fill it up just like his older brother. That gives it up. Hayes passes it up. Tries to get it going. Wisconsin looks like a little bit different team, but tries running the point. Look at this kick. Gets to the rim with a reverse. They got it right there. That little mini post. He's so effective. You lean on him. He knows your weight distribution. A beautiful drop step. Eight points, eight rebounds for half. Inside, Davis, no, there's half with his ninth board. Pursuing a double-double. Half first team, all Big Ten selection, all defense in the Big Ten. Second team, All-America. First sophomore in Badger program history to make the All-America team. Great understanding of how to play the game. Price and misfires looking for Pritzel. Well, the emotion is real. Indiana is trying to survive and try to play their way, win their way to March Madness. Badgers know they have a ticket. Wisconsin in control here in D.C. Boy, Wisconsin lead a lot of time left. So that's not a, a deficit that you would think would be insurmountable. However, 
Raft, in this game, Wisconsin feels like they've got their thumb on the Hoosiers. Well, the way they play defense, they just specialize in getting you late into shot clock, forcing deep jacks. It's been a major issue. And offensively, you like the big guy? Yeah, the big guy. I mean, they get it to him. He, he's poised. He knows how to score, when to go, when to kick it back out, when to repost. Pretty good combination. Hayes and half. Half with eight points, nine boards. Has an assist. He is a stat stuffing machine. He is a great passer. Led the Big Ten in steals as well. Go, 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 go. for a minute. <laughs> Ohio State player. An old pal. Speaking of stat stuffing. Yeah, exactly. That is his routine. Right? Wisconsin has won 17 of their last 19 games against Indiana. And the Hoosiers trying to get something good. That little bully ball inside, and Davis like finally gets one to score. Give him a rebound as well. Off for timeout, you got to play tough and hard and go to the rim a little bit. A little bit of the zone look now to shake things up. Wide open foul line area for a flash. Gap job, now straight man. Look like the zone at the beginning might be their match. No, this is their match. Leaving Trice wide open for three. He goes, rattles in and out. Make them think a little bit, not a bad ploy. Newkirk picked up by Trice. And here's Green. And Green is fouled. He'll get three. Boy, does that get you healthy quickly? Potential of another three to tack on. He loved the challenge, but under control on the closeout. The guard sees that lead to 10. And where's the foul? Didn't give him any room to land, I think, is Probably. how they called it. Uh, trying to run by, really. He doesn't just stick the leg out. It's like one of the would have passed on that one. What do you think? I just, I, I'm just the play-by-play -play announcer. I don't know. Are you leaving me out I, just, there I, I feel like you're on your own. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the first free throw was good. Two more coming. Let's check in with Mike. You know, listen to the last couple of huddles with Indiana. Almost every sentence ended with Tom Crean saying, let's go. He seems to be trying to get the energy up, and he says, we're too, letting them be too comfortable. Get in their faces on defense. And take the game to him. I like that, Mike. Uh, it's a do or die for them. You mentioned the importance of this game and advancing. Uh, just be a little more aggressive by nature. Cut it to a single-digit deficit, and Green makes it an eight-point game. So Green will take a seat. Bryant comes in. 10-22 left. Wisconsin by eight. Rogers leading score. Bronson Kane, he's at three threes in this one. Looks like the Rose playing man on Koenig and everybody else in the box. Yep, that's what it is. Which doesn't leave half much room to operate. Forces others to win it. Half away from the basket, gives it back, tries, passes it up. Shot clock down to four. Koenig's got it, as he usually does at the end of the clock. Puts up a prayer. And half keeps it alive. Offensive board. Three around him. And now in a scatter shot, the Badgers whip the ball around and it turns into a layup. That was a thing of beauty. Frenzy play uh, really picked apart the defense. But when you play that jump defense, you've got a gang rebound. When you talk about experience and players who have been through the fire and this group having, other than Trice, having gone through the NCAA Five tournament. Second. Five uh, second call. Over. They still have that call if you hold on to the ball. If you dribble, they don't. But this is just amazing how Hap sticks to it. Terrific play. Even the deflection back to keep it alive to his teammate. And the final, uh, the ability of Hayes to find the pass on the money. A lot of teams in that scenario pull it back out to set it up. Hazel launch a three. Well, Blackman the rebound. Can Indiana get something in transition? The Badgers get back. The Wisconsin really should triple drive. They can pick that box apart. Four against four, a lot easier. Ten point deficit for the Hoosiers. Brian deep. And Brian gets the foul on half. And they got him right under the rim where he wanted him. Power up. That's amazing. He has a defensive lapse. He's really upset with himself. So he gets banged underneath, and that's the territory owned by the offense. That's a third foul on Ethan Happ. Hayes still playing with those two fouls. Thomas Bryant has one point. 
point in this game. He's 0 for 4 from the field, now 1 for 3 from the free throw line. He's going to have a bigger impact, no question about it. Well, this Indiana team certainly missing a great deal. OG Ananobi went out with a knee injury. They're 5 and 8 since Ananobi's injury. This is their 14th game without him. And they're down about 10 points per game without Ananobi. A great talent, you're right. Look at this, don't be at home with the knee. Hayes couldn't finish it, a little off the rim for him. How about Brown out hustling him? And that, that's a play that Indiana's got to come up with. Blackman called for the foul. Uh, you got to be aggressive. Uh, you've given up a lot of holes. They give you an opportunity with a miss here. And just a slap by Brian versus the two hands. You've seen that. Seal it with both. You have to. As Johnson's turned the tables on the offensive boards. Here's Showalter for three. On the dish from Kading. That's how Brian Kading got a piece of the lane. Kading with his fourth assist. A quick pull by Blackman. Short. Another offensive board for the Hoosiers. Nice hands by Showalter. Kading on the break. Tries to his left. Smart. Smart. Doesn't need it. Pulls the defense, leaves Trice open. Two big, two big time plays by Kenny. Box and one. Dismissed summarily with the ability to drive by Kenny. And then the poise under fire. A lot of guys would have jacked it up. Not him. Found his partner. Biggest lead thus far with 8 12 left. Now Wisconsin with a little bit of a push and Raft defense turning into offense and some quick decision making by Bronson Koenig. I can just see all the help at this end and uh, a run out. Now Wisconsin bites you every once in a while a fast break. Well look at the poise here. You think he's going in and no he's just going to draw that defense into a comfort zone and all of a sudden you're in Never Never Land and just get those puppies organized. Tries loving to stroke that baby. Koenig knows he's the magnet, and he draws two defenders, leaving Trice wide open. And you see the shooting touch for the Badgers here tonight, shooting at 50% from behind the arc. They came together Sunday against the Golden Gophers of Minnesota, got their mojo back, according to Greg Gard, felt like they got a little confidence back and looked like themselves again, and they've been able to carry that over until Friday night. Uh, they're an experienced group, as we noted, with 111 wins. But Trace is the guy that has that edge, I think. It makes them a little bit different. He's going to take people and drill it as well. That's off of Brian. Good defense. Ooh. I, wow. Nigel Hayes agrees with you. By the way, Trice is in our Motel 6, 6 man, 11 points. He's hit 4 of 9. Three of those 4 makes are 3 point makes. Well, Koenig now with 5 assists. He has set him up on a couple of occasions. Shot clock down to 7. Newkirk gets stuck. Here's Morgan for 3. Beautiful rotation. Knocks it down. He is a terrific player right there. Get it out. He'll do a lot of damage. Had some shoulder problems last year. Surgery after the season on that shoulder. Has not shot the ball well from behind the arc. Uh, I was down there. He got banged up this year a little bit. Was able to continue, though. So Walter goes by, loses the handle. Bryant there for him. Here come the Hoosiers now. Quick pass. Blackman all the way in. Blackman easy as it gets. And what a nice job by Bryant sealing there to make sure inhibit the defense. And it didn't take Greg Gard long to point to Ethan Happ to go check in. Matter of fact, he won't let it go any further. And a nice run here by the Hoosiers. But a real good understanding of the dribble, the drive, and getting people the extra look. And Bryant with the screen underneath opens up the opportunity to. 10-point game. Badgers have the lead. They will have the ball. Ethan Happ back in. Our auto owners game leaders. Blackman leads all scorers with 12. The Badgers have 11 from Koenig, but 5 for Wisconsin in double figures. Yeah, back to the straight-up man. A, a take with the wide open middle as Happ goes to the left box for him. He's just picking us up. Wisconsin held a 6-point halftime lead. Indiana got no closer then five, and then the Badgers went on a 19 to nine run. They opened it up to 15. All of a sudden, Indiana, with a little bit of a push, is back in it. Back 
Within 10, Newkirk will sit. The three guard look now. Koenig with Showalter and Trice. Rapid Hayes in the front court. Now Hayes trying to go to work with Bryant. Shot clock to nine. Just when you feel like Wisconsin has no options and Bryant comes out too firm, fouls Trice. That one stung him a little bit as Trice clutching at his left shoulder. I think it stung Tom Green more. I mean, that far from the rim, what are you doing, big fella? Goodness, a jarring blow. Third foul on Bryant. Played just eight minutes in the first half with two quick fouls. Tough night for Bryant. Has not made a field goal. Loses it. He sticks with it. The nice ball thing. Oh, oh, Trace and half finishes. Great look. Second assist for Trice. Half now with 12. Gives him a double double. 12 points, 10 rebounds. The speed of that pass made it possible. Good hands here. Blackburn gets off a tough pass, finding Johnson wide open. He drew two and found his partner. We figure Indiana is going to have to start hitting some threes. They are unable to get in their transition game. But if you can get a couple of pops, if you get some misses on one end and get a little bit of movement, like they did when half was on the floor, you never know. You can't, a momentum team. You can't waste trips because they use so much clock. Half gives it up. Ball's moving around. Here's Showalter now. And it's Morgan who clears it away. Green barking out instructions here. Into the half court set they go again. And a little horns work. They have not run their little high low game with a pin down by Bryant in the lane. This feels like a big possession as we approach the five minute mark. During one shot. Nine to seven or nine to six. Bryant gives it up. Morgan, he'll pull it. Rolls in and out. And it's Hayes off his hand. But I think they got a foul. And they're going to call Blackman for the foul. That'll be Wisconsin ball. From the rear, boy, that was a big time delivery. And get them right in touch if that went down by Morgan. Third foul on James Blackman. Good eye, coach. And yeah, giving it away really underneath. This thing doesn't go down. It just unfortunately it gets tangled up with Hayes. And stretching the floor a little bit now. And this is where Wisconsin may get an open look. They're not going to be in a hurry. But if you gamble on the trap, they got enough snipers out there. Green checking Showalter. That comes for him. He always goes through this guy. Look at this movement. Double team. Oh, my goodness. He just brings all the laundry to one side. Left him in the dark. He sure did. Ended up on the other side of the rim. Quick release by Green. Big shot. Devontae Green. Timeout as Green hits a quick three for Indiana. And it is an eight-point game. Half on one end and a big answer by the Hoosiers. Shifty. The second team All-American. That's a big bucket from three-ball range by Devontae Green. BTN is brought to you in part by State Farm. Talk to an agent today at 800 State Farm. Our nation's capital, the World War II Memorial. And here we are, the first of our doubleheader on BTN with the Badgers leading Indiana. And you see the sharp shooting of Wisconsin. Nine three-pointers made. Suddenly, Indiana has uh, shot their way back into the mix. And they've made eight threes. Brian Anderson with... Bill Raftery, Mike Hall is with us as well. Let's hear from Mike now. What do you got, Mike? Guys, look for the Hoosiers to switch to a smaller lineup so they can try to go man-to-man -to, -man to keep them uncomfortable and put the pressure on them these final four and a half minutes. Yeah, Mike, you're right. All of a sudden, the big seven strike is going to be a trap as well. He's a little more aggressive. It is Bryant who sits. McSwain is in. Indiana, by the way, has no timeouts remaining in the final four minutes of this game. After the screen, and now they got the mismatch they want. Trice will shoot it instead. Look at the route. 
got it, secures it, and is fouled. And that half is so smart. He's got the mismatch. He doesn't get the ball, but he knows he's in offensive rebounding position to control the deal at the rim. Scouting report on Ethan Happ when he arrived in Wisconsin. It was the great hands. He secures everything. And right here, you just see exactly. Now, they don't go to him, uh, but he spins out, gets in position. He probably can't jump over the Saturday edition of the Daily News, but uh, he knows how to grab hold of it with two hands. And as Mike reported, Tom Green going small, and that's the risk he takes. As Happ leaps right over the shorter players. He cannot hit the free throw, however. He struggles. Nothing on that free throw line. Could be a story. 48% free throw shooter is Ethan Happ. Badgers have only been there five times tonight. Big One chance for the Hoosiers. Excuse me, Brian Lottie dribbling. Green with Hayes on him. Green will step back. Tough shot. And it's Hayes who secures it. Gotta make the ball move a little bit. Trice will slow it down. Vito Brown on the bench as Greg Gard goes small as well on the counter. It's been an interesting matchup for these coaches. And who chases who on the floor? Shot clock down to five. He's gonna go. And with McSwain on him, McCannick looking at the mark and it's half. Keeps it alive. Who's it out on? Officials look at each other. Indiana ball. And they got the right one, too, I think. Happ almost came up with that one, though. Always in the game. Ethan Happ, second half. Nice. Terrific overall. Grabbed 14 points, 11 boards, but he's really established himself here in half number two. And what he does well, he doesn't push off with that arm. He just protects so nobody gets in the way. No harm for a steal. And then, nice little look. By Hayes. There is art imitation. Newkirk off the tape. Looking for a foul. Didn't get it. And Green asking for a foul as well. Running right to Lewis Garrison. They're going to use a little clock. There was a body bump at the other end. Approaching two and a half remaining in regulation here. They don't want to be behind late against Wisconsin. It can be painful. One of the great closing teams, especially when you get under five minutes. Clock ticks to two. Trice gives it up. Katie gets it in time. Dagger. Big time. Yeah. On the dish. Now the other end. Blackman scores. A quick bucket for Indiana, but Trice sets up Katie beautifully. What a pump fake by the little guy to set it up. All the handlers out here now. Another open luck. And here's Trice. Does he have one in him? No. In and out it goes. Hayes and Blackman. They're going to have the ball. Possession arrow belongs to the Hoosiers. Uh, this is just terrific basketball. Pump, bite, draw, dish, knock it down. Some early onions. Who's like kidding? Start scouting Wisconsin and looking ahead to the NCAA tournament. That combo with Trice and Showalter is looking formidable right now. Mm -hmm. A lot of teams play small. Kansas in particular comes to mind. Foul on half. Three-point chance as Morgan spins his way to the basket. Number four on Ethan Happ. A nice footwork here. I think he has played very well, Morgan, yesterday and today. He mentioned his injury, his difficulty last year, a little bit this year. So guard will counter, will sit, Vito Brown back in. And Greg Guard takes a peek at that clock, which has 139. And Wisconsin with a seven-point lead. Morgan trying to cut into that. He's a 74% free throw shooter. And Brian, what impresses me with him is his handle. He's really good with the basketball for a guy that size. Morgan with 14 points. And misses the free throw. Had a three-point play earlier in the first half. Can't convert here. That's a big miss. Overshoots Trice, turnover Wisconsin. Trice trying to hold his ground and Kaney anticipated him backpedaling towards the baseline. 
Turnover number seven for Wisconsin. They've handled it well. And just seeing the lead pass and where they really had something going too because it was three out there with Koenig if they so chose. Koenig's first turnover. Badger fans will remember a game that Wisconsin let get away a couple of weeks ago against Iowa. They had a lead. They missed free throws and they turned the ball over. Normally he's very solid. Talking for three. And Indiana is right there. How about that? Barry's one. Four-point game. And this puts a lot of pressure on the shooter. One to go. And the U.S. fluent and comfortable with the delivery. And now we'll see who has the guts to shoot it for Wisconsin. Koenig's been clutch throughout his career. Here's with a ball screen, empty side. Koenig with six on the shot clock. No half on the floor. Goes by Newkirk to the basket, and he gets the spin and scores it. What a call by the bench there. Greg given the open middle and a blow by. Six point game, show up for a steal and a foul. No basket. Blackman with the foul at the half court line. Zach Showalter didn't hear the whistle. He finished big time at the rim, thinking he had a breakaway. And just right here, jumping that lane. And there's the foul, no question about it. At the end of this, no dust on that guy. Your dagger was in jeopardy for a moment. It was. But that Very might be so. a double a du dagger. Exactly. Premature dagger. <laughs> Can get you in trouble. And Blackman gets Showalter. The whistle was called right there at the half court line. And it got loud quickly in here. Showalter didn't hear it. But what a couple of possessions here for Wisconsin. They get the score, they get the defensive stop. And now, in a game that was a four-point game, a chance to stretch it. Well, I never disagree with you. A little blow-by here with the empty middle. He's on the right wing, Brown on the left. And the willingness to take that big-time shot. Sean Walter may have heard the whistle. He just tried to put a little juice in that Like, What do you think? He wanted a little Bill Raftery <laughs> moment, a little. whether it counted or not. <laughs> one and one is the call here, so... Showalter will shoot the free throw. Four fouls on Blackman. Germantown, Wisconsin. Zach Showalter played with Luke Fisher. I just gonna say Luke, yeah, from the same half high school. State champions. Uh, Germantown. Showalter's had a terrific career. A guy who's grinded his way through minimal roles, took a red shirt. And uh, he's part of this fantastic senior class. Tough kid. Very tough kid. Solid. At the free throw line as well as Show Walter at 82%. Knocks him down with half on the bench. It's an eight point lead for Wisconsin. Indiana's got to go quick. Nice help. Stringing it out. Tough shot. Johnson, no. And he secures it. They're going to give it. And to the free throw line will go Trice. And the Badger fans here in Washington, D.C. come to their feet. Looking like a date in the semifinals with either Maryland or Northwestern, which will be our next matchup on BTN. Now, you know, we had that graphic earlier with the pictures of the guys that have been here for a long time with Wisconsin. It tells in games like this. Uh, Duluth trading, hardest working player. He's got the benchmark on this award, Ethan Hatton. 14 points, missed just two shots, pulls down 12 boards. And what a presence he always is. A lot to be said. He can relate to people my age. He plays under the rim. And he plays under the rim in a beautiful fashion. He's got the ground game. <laughs> and not a cloud of dust either. <laughs> Demetri Trice will be able to look back on this game and whenever he is in a funk or in a slump, this will be one to look at because he had a terrific performance. All right, Rafter, now we're getting set up for this one. Northwestern, the darlings of the Big Ten. One of the great stories this year in college basketball. And the home team, Maryland, as the crowd files in. Johnson, no. And look who's flying high for the board. It is Trice. 
this one is coming to a conclusion here for Wisconsin. And a lot of smiles, a lot of moves that were very helpful. Playing small help, no question about it. You mentioned the numbers by half. The Terrapins have arrived. The short trip. And Maryland will have the crowd behind him, Mark Turgeon. And Maryland with a terrific finish. Started leaking a little oil in the back half of the Big Ten schedule. And Maryland earns the three seed. And they'll be matching up against the Wildcats of Northwestern. Michigan State certainly the end of the year. Boyd there. Humor a little bit. Get your thoughts quickly on Tom Crean and the Indiana Hoosiers. There's been so much discussion about a coach who was the coach of the year in the Big Ten last year. This looks like a loss that's going to probably take Indiana. Well, certainly take Indiana well, the, out of March Madness. The expectations at Indiana are just incredible, no question. Bob Knight set a standard everybody expects, but nobody works harder. Gets his kids to play. It's just a tough, tough loss. The promising start to the year for Indiana wins over Kansas and North Carolina. Both ranked inside the top three at the time. Got Indiana in the top ten at the end of November. But it is a tough finish for the Hoosiers. And after a big win yesterday against Iowa, the Hoosiers are out. Congratulations to Wisconsin, Michigan, Minnesota, Wisconsin remain. And now the Badgers awaiting Maryland or Northwestern. Now you mentioned uh, early in the game, Ananobi not being there. You lose a player of that prominence. It really changes things. I've seen that in the Big East with Sumner, with Xavier. Uh, just tough a lot of guys move up in positions and demands on them are a little more difficult than they can handle sometimes let's hear from the head coach Greg Gard he is with Mike Brian thanks this is a team in Indiana that averages 80 points a game how did you hold them 20 below their average well defensively we, it was a group effort obviously some individuals on their their scores did a terrific job but our, our team defense was pretty good and we've gotten better as the years gone on we rebounded the ball much better the second half, which helped. Ethan Half's first half, he had almost as many points as turnovers, and by the end of the game, he's got a double-double, and he shut down Thomas Bryant. How do you do that? Well, it, that was one thing we talked about at halftime. Let's not turn the ball over. We're wasting some possessions there, but, you know, he's a pretty complete player. He's worked really hard to be as good as he is, and obviously he's got teammates that know when to find him and, and where to find him. You know, a week ago, your players held the players-only meeting, and they said they had to find their joy. Since then, you beat your rival by 17, and you won a Big Ten tournament game by 20. Have they found the joy? Well, we're playing better, so if that means there's joy been found, so be it. I, I, I like the way they're playing, though. Congratulations, Greg. Thank you. Well, all right, guys, we are going to get more post-game reaction now by checking in with our guys at the studio, and they have a very special guest with them. Fellas? Indeed we do, Mike. Joined here by Ethan Happ coming off a uh, double-double as the Badgers advance to the semis. And Ethan, look, there was a lot of talk coming down the stretch this season about this team was struggling. Would Wisconsin be able to find itself and become the team that so many expected you guys to be? It feels like that started to happen here over the last couple of games. Tell us what's changed. Uh, I mean, really, we, we kind of sputtered offensively for a while and our defense saved us and then once we got the offense going again then our defense is lacking and now we kind of found out a way to, to make both those things happen on a nightly basis. Talk to Nigel before your final game of the regular season had a great game started to shoot the ball a lot better in the second half of that game he talked a little bit about the pressure because of the expectation that you guys have created really for this fan base for yourself how much of a challenge has it been to live up to that expectation and get past some of the struggles you've had this year? Uh, I mean, it is tough at times because we know, we're, we're, especially when we lose at home, it's very disappointing to all the fans. And you can see we travel really well. But uh, it's tough to live up to it. But, I mean, we wouldn't want to have it any other way. Absolutely. We want to expect less of us. You guys have had to deal with some adversity throughout the course of the year. Talk about the changes you've had to add to your offensive game, Ethan, with teams now starting to come down and double team and try to get the ball out of your hand. Talk about that adjustment period for you. Uh, I mean, it's a good thing and a bad thing. I mean, it's good that uh, I improved so much over the last year that they have to start doubling, but at the same time, I kind of wish I could go back to last year where it was just single coverage all the time. So it's, uh, it's something that I've had to go through and I struggled with early, and I think it's getting better. Wisconsin into the semifinals for the 11th time in 20.
all-time Big Ten tournaments. Ethan, Happ, congratulations on a great performance. Hey, thanks for having me, guys. Thanks for bringing me some luck. Appreciate that. <laughs> thanks. Thanks, Let's send it back over to Brian. All right, thanks, Dave. And uh, here with Bill Raftery. And, you know, the, the theme for Wisconsin coming in to this one was can they make the free throws down the stretch? They were four for four when it counted. And how would Ethan Happ handle the double team? He put in a phone call to Frank Kaminsky. Whatever they talked about worked because uh, Happ handled himself beautifully. I think Frank said, don't shoot a three-point shot. That's what he said. <laughs> make the right pass. Get inside and uh, make some good decisions. You know, they're well-schooled. They're, they're kids that have been down the road. They're tough defensively. They really understand the value of the basketball. They get to the free throw line. Uh, they just don't take bad shots. So you have to be on top of your game to compete with them. You got another one in you? I, I think so. Oh, you know. We got a good one I'm coming. I'm not that old. The home team is here, Maryland and Northwestern. The guys in the studio will carry it on as well. Between games, we'll be back with you for a terrific matchup between the six and the three. Stay tuned. Game break presented by Quicken Loans is coming up next. This has been an exclusive presentation of BTN. For Raftery, Mike Hall, I'm Brian Anderson. We'll see you right back here after a quick game break.